in this video something about the so-called decoupling. Uh, in radio circuits and also in audio circuits uh, we supply say all kinds of amplifiers, a power amplifier or a pre-amplifier and in radio technology we supply say um, a first stage with a field effect transistor connected to an antenna say the front end and we also connect to the power supply an end amplifier for audio or an IF intermediate frequency amplifier and in all these cases we have to do with the so-called decoupling and when you study radio circuits from the past even from the 1920s, uh, 1930s, 1950s etc etc you will always see a, a kind of so-called decoupling and this is how I made it for a intermediate amplifier that I'm going to work on. This will be say the ceramic filter here, uh, 4, 6, 5 kilohertz and there will be perhaps a field effect transistor or a BGT uh, normal transistor here and in the input perhaps a FET and perhaps say uh, a classical old school NPN transistor but anyway uh, the issue with say decoupling is that all these units pre-amplifiers uh, front end circuits and amplifiers may not see uh, them and then I mean in, in DC terms or in AC terms of course not in AC terms but anyway may not see each other on the power supply lead so when you have here say a power supply lead and say it's positive could be anyway uh, and there are all kinds of units here preamplifier and amplifier connected to that same positive line they say see each other over that positive line and that means that you can get say oscillations let's say the standard problem with no proper decoupling say we have here the positive and we have here the minus minus often connected to ground uh, say we have here the end amp between the positive here the positive and the minus and here we have the preamp connected to the same line between the positive and the minus and say here the front end circuit uh, uh, between the positive and the, and the minus of course when uh, say signals are generated or amplified uh, they they can also travel over the over the power supply lead and that's say a bad thing so you must in a certain way use decoupling uh, and the best idea is say this is a unit here amplifier unit also here an amplifier and also here an amplifier of course the end amplifier needs current so uh, it cannot be decoupled too much because the, the there could be it could be necessary that the maximum current must flow here so but the preamps and the front end etc can all be say supplied via a resistor here as I realized that's a very sloppy video here but also a resistor here and then of course say here a cap um, it's sloppy I'm absolutely sure but anyway this is uh, say uh, the way that you can do it and it also shows the way that I'm doing it now for that IF amplifier here you see 
um, an electrolytic cap paralleled with a non-polar cap and not visible, perhaps visible a little bit. Uh, there is a one mega ohm resistor that bridges um, both capacitors. And that is a filter and more important here, what I wanted to tell and also wanted to show in the uh, here in this part of the video or explanation. Here there is a resistor in the order of 120 ohms. It can also be 100 ohms, it can also be 47 ohms. It depends of course a little bit on the current that the circuit takes when it is connected to that uh, decoupling unit. With 150 ohms we we know and then especially on low voltages say between 12 volts and 18 volts or 24 volts uh, there is a maximum current that can flow that of course depends on the transistor circuit but in general say this is a good value for circuits that take a current preamps front ends etc etc that take a current in the order of 5 milliampere up to say approximately uh, 20 milliampere uh, in the order of 12 volts up to 24 volts so this is a kind of universal way of decoupling uh, a certain transistor stage and here it is again uh, the importance well I've talked about it the say the problem that you could get when you connect all your amplifiers pre amplifiers and amplifiers to the same lead supply lead positive could also be negative but anyway uh, in many cases it's positive um, that all these circuits can get into oscillation and such a capacitor here it's now say 10 microfarad will surely damp the oscillation and also the uh, say the 100 nanofarad cap will also damp the oscillation etc etc so this will be a kind of separate unit supplied here via the power lead and then uh, giving out its energy its signal here at the end of the transistor or the field effect transistor anyway and then it sends its signal to the second stage and that second stage could be an uh, another amplifier audio amp in this case but could also be another high frequency amplifier and they are act as separated units that don't disturb each other back to the schematic again and when you are a little bit acquainted with electronics and then especially old school, especially old school electronics you will see here <laughs> say classical old school decoupling unit uh, when you study say old school 1920s 1930s 1950s radio circuits you will often see here in the lead to the anode a choke and the choke has the same purpose say it prevents that high frequencies that are say amplified at the anode and travel to another the, to the second stage of a tube circuit and cannot travel here on the power supply lead and in many cases that is say in the order of 150 volts to 300 volts well that's quite a lot anyway uh, uh, say uh, the frequencies that are amplified here in the tube circuit cannot travel 
to the power supply lead because of that choke call that chokes out all these high frequencies. This is also a way of decoupling and you can surely see it in old radio circuits, 1920s, 1950s, etc, etc. So this is another way of decoupling and when you make a radio, a tube radio, um, and don't want to say mimic a certain circuit but want to do your own experiments, could be that you need such a choke coil. So for instance here the radio signal, uh, of course in that case you need here a resistor in the order of one mega ohm. That in general, by the way, that has to do say with the properties of the radio tube, but at least when you want to make a TRF radio, well, of course, I cannot get too deep now uh, in say tube TRF radios uh, because the whole idea is now uh, to talk about the importance of the uh, decoupling. So again here the decoupling unit of course say when you have a high voltage here the capacitor here the electrolytic capacitor here and the non-polar capacitor here must be adapted to that higher voltage that's logical say when you have here 6 volts you can use here a 12 volt electrolytic capacitor when you have here say 24 volt use a 35 volt electrolytic capacitor and when it goes to 50 volt or so use a say a 68 volt capacitor and of course the non-polar cap must also say adapted the value must be adapted to the voltage that you use Pen over somewhat. Thanks for watching. This will be the IF amplifier, and always hear that decoupling unit. Well, that was more than enough, I think. Thanks for watching.